This morning, there are high wattage hearings in Washington on one of the most controversial diseases in the country, Lyme disease. More and more scientific evidence is showing that it can rewire your brain and in some cases may even change your personality. Our Elizabeth Leamy has more. They're tiny insects that can cause big problems. Ticks, carriers of Lyme disease, and there are more of them this year than ever. And this has been a nice wet spring. Bugs are going crazy. Ticks are going crazy. 20,000 Americans are infected every year, but countless others go undiagnosed, missing out on critical treatment, and some argue triggering a chronic, crippling form of the disease. The fallout might be more than just physical. Some believe Lyme disease, when left untreated, can rewire our brains and change our personalities. I'm convinced that Lyme and a chronic form can affect psychiatric issues, can affect neurologic issues, and you can have neurologic problems. But other experts say Lyme disease has no permanent effects on the brain. It's not going to cause any specific changes in behavior. It's not going to change any rat cause any radical change in your behavior that would not otherwise be there. Still, Lyme patient Kelly Kulas says she saw herself change overnight. They put me on like stage fright medications. Doctors thought, oh, maybe that's obsessive compulsive, but it, it's just it's not. Some say Lyme disease can even lead to episodes of aggression, dubbed Lyme rage. Terry Sedlak, the man accused of gunning down Reverend Fred Winters in March, has Lyme disease, and Lyme rage is part of his defense. Critics consider that a modern-day twist on the so-called Twinkie defense, used by the man who assassinated San Francisco activist Harvey Milk. The example I like to cite is if I happen to have Lyme disease and I get run over by a truck, the Lyme disease didn't cause my broken leg. For Good Morning America, Elizabeth Leamy, ABC News. We're joined now by our GMA medical contributor, Dr. Marie Savard. And Marie, we, we've heard all the studies and, and it's such a controversial issue here. What do you think? Well, I think Lyme disease is a serious problem. It's a spirochete, a sort of spiral bacteria that can infect or burrow into the heart, muscle, the, heart the muscles, mm -hmm. the joints, skin, and even the brain. So I think it is serious. It can cause really serious complications if not treated early. But the good news is if you identify it and treat it early, that helps. On the other hand, those who have not been treated, who have chronic symptoms, right. studies have shown that treating with long-term antibiotics seem not to work. So I think the real question is, we need to do a lot more investigation to find out who has what and how we can treat them better. And you're not just an expert. You had Lyme disease yourself, what, two summers ago? I did. And what I, did you learn? I actually learned I didn't have a rash. I had a sudden high fever, stiff neck, se severe headache. Mm. I, I was extremely ill. And fortunately, I thought about the tick. I thought about Lyme disease mm -hmm. because I was in the end of Long Island and I got treated. I had a blood test and I was treated early. But I was very sick for a number of weeks and I can imagine, I have a lot of respect for people who are complaining who've not been diagnosed because it does affect the central nervous system as well. And we know with infections of the brain, which this can cause, right. you can have behavior changes, personality changes. So again, I think we have to listen, pay attention and do some more. But you're okay now, everything? Totally, but I was treated very early and I think that's the concern. If it's not diagnosed and it's allowed to sort of burrow into the tissue and cause that inflammation and infection for some time, does that put you at greater risk for some of these long-term complications? It can certainly cause arthritis mm -hmm. long-term. It can cause a Bell's palsy, a paralysis of the face. The thought of personality changes are certainly possible and need to be considered at least. Give us some suggestions on how we can protect ourselves and Com our children. Too. Yes, common sense things. First of all, ticks like to be in the tall grasses and leaves, so avoid tall grasses and leaves. Second, wear long clothing when you're outdoors. Tuck in your long mm. pants into your socks. Third, add an anti-tick repellent. Talk to your pediatrician if you have a young child to ask what is safe. And then finally, inspect, inspect, inspect as much as you can. Look for those little tiny ticks. They like to be behind the crease of the knees, moist places. And if you see one, get tweezers, pull it off as close to the skin as you can. And the sooner you pull it off, the better. If it's been on there more than a couple days, mm. the chances of you being infected are much higher. And give us the symptoms again, what we should look out for. Well, you saw that bullseye rash. Right. That's dramatic. Did you have that? I did not. And that mm. does not occur with everyone. Second, you might have high fever, chills, headache, which I had, and then certainly joint pains, fatigue, extreme fatigue. I remember experiencing that. And you can have enlarged lymph nodes, a number of things. All right. Well, I'm glad, glad you're all right, but I remember when you were talking about that. Yeah, and I think we have to take this serious. We have sure. to listen to both sides. It's not a black and white situation. No, it's not. Marie, thanks so much. We appreciate that.